Okay. Hello friends. This is Yusuf here. Welcome to the final part of the ILE crash course. So in this video, uh, we are going to learn about uh, binding directory. Uh, we are also left with one concept uh, activation group for which I have already mentioned that uh, I have another video which I'll be adding it in the playlist as well as on the link in the description. So as of now, uh, we are going to explore on the binding directories. Okay, so let's go in. Okay, so basically um, binding directories are one of the easiest way to make you your program uh, attached with the modules or service programs or whatever. Okay, so simply uh, a binding directory is nothing but a collection of modules, one or more modules or subprocedures, sorry, service programs. Okay, so let's see that in action. So for the sake of uh, implementation, I'm going to write everything from scratch. Again, we are going to use the date API and we are going to take one method say for example we can use the uh, format date method okay uh, this we have seen in our last video as well so we'll take this procedure try to call this procedure from another program with the use of binding directory okay so i'm going to create a program rpgle pgle okay. so let me have my boilerplate here Okay, so let's have a NLR equal to start. Okay, so what do I want? What do I want? I want simply uh, something like a for format date is equals to uh, get format date of ISO date. So this ISO date is a variable in my program which will hold a date. So it could be today's date, nine, right? Nine sixty okay so this iso date will come here this is the procedure which we're going to call and this is the variable to receive the output so very so we need to declare these two locally here yes so date will be a standalone variable of length 10 and uh, format date is a variable of length 30. right so now we are missing uh, how do we call this procedure so this procedure is available in the module called dtap but before that uh, if you want to use the procedure we need to declare it so either i can include the header specification completely or i can take uh, only the particular procedure and uh, just need to put it here okay so let's give some space Okay, so now what we are missing. So this is basically our uh, uh, code. Uh, now the thing is we told this program RPG001C that uh, we will be calling this procedure, but we have not defined where it will come from. So definitely we are not going to write the code for this procedure in this program. We're gonna bind it from the DDP model. So option one is, you know already, right? We can compile this as a module and then we can do a create pgm with this module and the data api module or any service program which is created uh, using the data api module okay now we're going to use binding directory so for that uh, what i'm going to do we need to create the binding directory first okay so for that create bnd dir so b1 say for example a4 so it can have the default option so it's creating a binding directory called b1 now to add an entry we have to use uh, add bnd dir e okay add binding directory entry so take a four so here what we are going to do uh, we are going to add in b1 binding directory and you can see here we can have uh, either a module or a service program so if you have more than one you can give a plus here it will give you the list of uh, modules or service program to be added so in this case First, I'm going to directly add the date API module and it's a module. Okay, so now we just added. If you want to see, we can use a display binding directory of B1. This will display that we have one module inside. Fine. Now, how do we use this B1 uh, with this program, right? So for that, what we are going to do, default activation group, no and i'm going to say binding directory b1 
so now you can think uh, we didn't give this in our earlier program so say for example if you come here uh, in rpg001 say for example we didn't give anything here instead of that what we did we compiled this as a module then we did a create pgm right so when we compile this as a module the program or the system is well known that this will be ile program but now what we are going to do we are not going to compile this as a module instead of that we are going to do a create pgm but system will take care of everything because of this binding directory okay so let's see the magic so now what we have done this do a file and to see the output maybe we can do a display okay so let's do a file and uh, we are in rp001c i'm going to take, take it 14 then just enter so now you see it's comp compiled. So we didn't compile this as a module, okay? So now if you do a display PGM of RPG001C, so what we are seeing inside is actually a type of ILE program, okay? And then we see the system created a module with the same name, okay? We didn't create this. Okay, and also it binded the uh, modules from the binding directory, okay? So now if I'm going to run this one, call rpg 001c so we are seeing the result exactly what we want okay so this is how uh, it will be useful so now you can think that uh, it is eliminating the one thing called uh, compiling it as a module then binding it using create pgm command uh, it's reducing into a single step okay uh, that's main uh, thing okay and also if you have more than one module or service program uh, you do not need to do combine everything in create pgm okay so in create pgm normally what we'll do we'll uh, give the default module then we can do a plus here and then we will we'll add the list of modules or service program but if you convert these things into a binding directory then we can directly give that binding directory in the program okay so that is a core concept okay so now we have just created one binding directory and uh, applied it in the rpg001c now we are going to see the second way of doing the same okay without giving the header specification okay so now assume in this case how are we going to run this okay simply if you take a 14 a 4 here we have a default activation group okay just make it to no because you guys know that uh, ile program cannot run under default activation group okay so when i give no and press enter it will ask which activation group under which it will run either here you can give uh, no new or caller or any name or system generated value okay so i'm going to leave it as of now but come down here you will have the binding directory so if you give b1 and enter okay so again it does the same so either you are going to give your binding directory upfront in your header specification or you're going to give it um, uh, in the compilation time that's up to wish but it will do the same task so if we, if we do a call rpg01c you will get the same result okay yeah so that's the end of this video uh, i hope uh, it's a short one but it could have given you the understanding of uh, how and uh, when the activation group can be used and okay uh, so yeah so this is pretty much the end of the ile series uh, as i said earlier i will give the activation group link in the description and uh, add it in the playlist for the future guys reference uh, i'll I'm, i'll start some other series uh, upcoming series and i'll keep you post i'll keep you posted soon okay yeah thanks for your support thanks for watching i'll see you the next time bye bye